Okay, um, welcome back to the podcast. This is the first podcast of the new year, and this is a really, really awesome way to start this. Uh, today we have Johnny Young, who is the crypto voice actor, and uh, I'm super excited. So, how are you doing today, Johnny? Oh, I'm doing well, man. Thanks for having me. So, what's what's been going on with you? What are you doing recently? Um, it's been a new year. Um, I made it a goal of mine to, uh, I come back on camera. So like on film, television, all that, I'd walked mm -hmm. away about four years ago to take, I took a break, I should say. And, um, and so I was prepping all my friends have been pushing me to do this. So I got my headshots and a new manager and I was ready to like, I've been hitting the gym and I, I started to do like, just started to do like two a days and I got inspired to get back into like. I used to do like martial arts, like uh, Muay Thai, which is like Thai kickboxing and jujitsu. And so I started to ease it in. And the first day back, uh, we're doing warm ups, I was jogging, and then my calf just, it just, it just went out. And then oh. I went to the doctors. And um, so I'm sitting here. <laughs> I'm grateful for gaming and streaming and voice acting because none of that has slowed down. Mm -hmm. uh, so um but I'm, I'm here now with you chatting <laughs> yeah i see you you started talking about i was like good for him good for him and then and then you, i realized that you just said that you hurt your leg and i was like oh no i know it's coming i know what's coming <laughs> uh, so what what does um you, you said that you were on camera you stepped away from from it four years ago was that was that a decision to go more towards like voice acting or um, so what had happened was, so I've been, I've been acting for about like 20 years now. Uh, I started when I was, uh, uh, like 18. So my birthday is in like three days. So it's just about 20 years. So, um, and you know, I've been doing theater and film and television and I do it a couple indie movies here and there and like bit parts. Um, and it was a long road. And then uh, there came a time where I needed to I needed to make a decision and I sort of about like, you know, about, uh, about four years ago, I decided to sort of like put acting on hold and I, I got into real estate, um, like full time. I, I've always sort of been in real estate. Um, and you know, I, I sort of, I, I, wa I walked away from it, but in my mind, I was like, in my heart, I was like, I can't all completely walk away from this because I love it so much. So while I was doing real estate, I was like, okay, what, how could I keep acting without, you know, having to physically move my body everywhere? And, uh, and I, I've been a huge gamer my whole life. And I was, uh, w one summer, uh, I was kind of sitting there and, uh, I think it was, it was right around the time when Overwatch and Black Ops 2, I want to say came out. Was it three? I can't remember. I think it was three. Is it was around uh, 2015. I think so. Yeah, so yeah. it must have been three. Yeah, and and my, I had seen my friend Charlotte. She had voiced two characters. She had voiced Diva in Overwatch, and she had voiced, uh, gosh, I'm forgetting her character. She had the Golden Gun um, in Black Ops. Ser Ser oh. Right? Oh. I forgot, but yes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, "Oh my god, this is amazing!" And I immediately like texted her, and I was like, "Oh my god, how are you doing this? Like, I want to be a part of this. I'm a huge gamer." And she knew my work from she was my reader. Uh, there's this whole showcase, a diversity showcase thing that happens every year with all the networks: ABC, CBS, NBC. Mm -hmm. um, and she was one of my readers, and so she knew my work, and she immediately called me, and she was like coaching me you got to do this you got to do that um and uh i'm gonna walk into my agency and so she did and that's sort of how it all happened with with voice acting um and and i've been very fortunate to have gotten you know the, the roles that i've that i booked in the very short period of time of voice acting um so and you know i was doing that and then i got inspired to come back on camera so i love that I love that. I, I can't wait to see what you what you do on on camera. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do I do want to talk about the that timeline of you say like mid like two thousand or twenty fifteen that era. When mm -hmm. how how early did you book Apex? 
Um, I had booked Apex about season two. Um, it was it was season two. Is season two when Watson what was when Watson came out, right? Yeah. So I think so, yeah. I think the tail end of season one, I want to say. Okay. Um, and and I, I think it was around that. Yeah, because like I was playing Apex, I was a fan as well. Oh really? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Like I was, I was a. F- I mean, just to give you context, I was a huge fan of like our C- CEO Vince's work. Um, you know, he had he had done Medal of Honor, he had been done Call of Duty Modern Warfare one, two. And then he had done Titanfall, so I was a massive fan of Titanfall, and I was fall and like you know when Apex came out, I was like, "What is this?" It's like it, it feels like Titanfall, like the weapons are so similar. Mm-hmm. And I realized, oh my god, it's the same universe. And so my friends pretty much taught me how to play Apex season one, and we'd play we'd play every night. And then I got this audition. I was like, "I know what this is." Oh, and I was like, "This is either Titanfall three or Apex Legends," and um, I had read for it, and then they called me back. To Warner Brothers, and I was for a callback, and I'd never, usually for voice acting, for most cases, you don't really get a callback, like you don't go into the studio. I think that that was the first time that had that had ever happened, and I went in, and those like you know all the writers and you know um, all the guys that have respawned that were there, and our uh, you know audio director, and um, I'd read, and uh, and then later they told me that I got it, and I was like, and I couldn't tell my friends. And you play every night. And then they were like, oh, man, you know, I heard the next season there's going to be this, like, Korean legend. That's, and there's, like, leaks. And I was like, oh, man, that's crazy, man. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> like, uh, so I kept it from them for about, like, you know, the, the whole season. And when, once it got released, I was like, by the way, I voice crypto. And they're like, what? And they freaked out. So That is so context, cool. Yeah, I, I was a fan since the beginning. Um, and I played the game a lot. But, yeah, so that's I awesome. a lot about the game. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm curious if you, this is just like a hypothetical, if you could have two guns in your loadout in Apex, what, what are your two favorite guns to run? Oh man. So it's, it's probably the 301, 301 these days. I, I usually go between the 301 or the, or the 99, but the 301 is probably like a better overall weapon. I would, I would say, uh, and then my second, it, it used to be. Uh, either, man, that's a hard one, depending on the situation. It used to be between the Peacekeeper, the, uh, uh, oh my God, I'm blanking right now, um, Flatline, the Peacekeeper and the Flatline. But I'm like, these days, I'm starting to feel the the, the, the triple take. And then, okay, and it, yeah. So like, I would watch, like, I would watch Staycation uh, and like, he would like snipe mm-hmm. and like crack him. And then he would just like dash in. I'm like, oh, that's a pretty good strategy. So I was like, I've been trying to do that these days. But 301 for sure. Uh, overall, 301 uh, in between the Peacekeeper or the, or, or, or the Flatline. Okay. I like yeah. it. You, you a wingman guy at all? I've been getting better. It's it's a very difficult gun to use. But if you're really good with it, like Candy, Candy Roo is, like he... Um, uh, when I put... It's just... It's ridiculous. Like when I... I, I just... He... He's like, I'm going in, and then he'll he'll wipe everyone, and then I I'll just like pick up the scraps. But I'm trying, man. It's yeah. difficult. I love the gun though. Yeah, it is so fun to use, to be honest. When you down somebody with it, you feel so good. Oh yeah, you feel so good. I literally the other day I I clipped something that was just one kill, but it, it felt so good. Where I was like, I gotta show all my friends this. It was just four yeah. shots without missing, and I was just like, guys, watch this. <laughs> it just was so clean. It's so satisfying. I know. Yeah. I know. Um, it, but it, it's crazy, like how I I do want to bring this point up that I don't see with any other game is the family aspect of all the legends. You guys are amazing all together, and it's it's amazing to see. Oh, thanks, man. I mean, you know, I think it did happen. Sort it. There was a there was some there was there was a a start there was a beginning to it and then it sort of happened organically and honestly to give all credit it was Mela Mela Lee who voices Lifeline mm-hmm. um, she she is like she's like Lifeline she like wants to take care of everyone and she organized a field trip with like myself um, I think Watson so Justine 
I think I think Chris Edgerly was there, and Nick Chris Edgerly voices Pathfinder mm-hmm. and Octane. There was like a handful of us in the beginning. I, I, actually, no, I take that back. I was not a part of the first field trip, and she like baked cookies and and brownies for like the devs at respawn, and she dropped them off, and they and they loved it so much that they wanted her back, and then so she kind of made a field trip, and then we made a second one, and then a, and then a third one, and then like the family kind of grew and we're like hey we should hang out so we started hanging out and having drinks and like um having lunch and um you know they've been amazing like roger has given me roger and nick roger voices uh mirage Mm -hmm. and nick voices uh octane and chris voices pathfinder every one of them have like given me great advice and jb voice acoustic like jokes around and um, ben, who voices Fuse, we go hiking together. Um, and Mela and, and L always check up on me. They're like, are you okay? You know, <laughs> they call me. So um, I'm 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 eternally grateful for for all of them. And um, and you're right, I, I've never been a part of anything uh, that's been this sort of close. Sorry, that's me. That the, there's always cops going around outside where I live. Um, <laughs> You're, and you're right. I've never been a part of any any project, whether it's vo- including voice acting, voice acting on camera, or I'd say the closest thing would probably be a theater group. But um, I've never had anything like this, where everyone's just super supportive and just kind of clowns around with each other and mm-hmm. get together on the holidays. And you know, they open up their homes and we drink and we eat and we hang out and all that stuff. Yeah, I've just I've never seen it like with any game i don't think like other than i think like i've seen like stuff about um like a couple of like the overwatch characters are pretty good friends and stuff like that but not like a whole entire cast like gets together that's just that's unheard of and it's just such a great group of people to get together and it's so fun seeing pictures or you know uh where they do live streams like l and other people do live streams and yeah yeah it's just it's so cool to watch it's just it's a great being a viewer is is amazing i can only imagine how it feels for like you to to be there yeah i'm you know i'm grateful and and when i joined the cast i was like the new guy because again you know a lot of these guys on the cast they are super experienced Mm -hmm. experienced voice actors uh, and you know on camera actors and you know, they've been in the game for a really long time. And, you know, when I joined, I was the new guy and um, they gave me so, so much great advice. Excuse me. And um, you're right. Like, I'm, I'm grateful for, for that family. And like, you know, you know, calling out L, L, L call me out and he's like, you little shit, you little, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> we clown and we clown around with each other, uh, you know, and, and, and Ben is so wholesome and, you know, Oh, we have a we have a group chat. So anytime a new legend is added, we add him to the group chat with like all the actors and the writers, and we clown around. And, That's awesome. Um, That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I just I just thought that was that was so cool. I know it's amazing. Like, uh, it's amazing for all the fans to see. I don't know if you guys like if that's something that you guys think about but it is it's awesome for like everyone to to look and it's a thing with like when the new legends there that's really cool like i remember when fuse got added and then i saw him with you guys like it's it's cool it's it's so awesome to see just like everyone together yeah man no i agree dude uh i you know it's you know when growing up as a kid and and you know watching tv shows or like you know or 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 movies and and you hear about other actors where you you they seem like a family and then you and you find out later there's like been feuds or whatever and it's mm-hmm. like oh man that's such a shame but like i mean i i don't i didn't i never intentionally think about like oh the I do occasionally. The fans will love this, but it's just it's just been so organic. I, yeah. I, I literally yeah. love them, and they're amazing. And you know, I go see them, um, and and they, you know, we they they we take care of each other, and it's mm-hmm. it's been great. So it, it hasn't been like we haven't like I haven't ever like been like oh they'll like this and planned it out. But yeah, occasionally I will like 
or like signed stuff, I'm like, oh man, this picture came out like shit. Like I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta reprint this. You know, like mm-hmm. those occasions I will, but um, yeah, you know, or or, so, or like when we get together, I think there's a conscious effort of like, oh, we'll do something funny. I think I think they'll. I think they'll get a kick, a kick out of this. Mm-hmm. We'll do like dumb, dumb photos or something like that, you know, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what, uh, I'm curious to respawn's, uh, secretivity of, of an audition. What, mm-hmm. what was kind of the premise of the first things that you got for crypto? Like, what did they tell you right away? Cause are they allowed to tell you, like you said, you were trying to guess like what game it was for so obviously they didn't tell you what game it was for so like well it's it's you know listening to a lot of other voice actors now i think i think it is it's changed but you know back in the day i'm so sorry (laughs) sirens no you're fine i swear i didn't kill anybody (laughs) but uh uh you know back back in the day you know not a lot of people knew what mozambique was Mm -hmm. Uh, but i i or at least for from the I, I guess I shouldn't speak for everybody, for, for, but from the voice actors' perspectives. But I I was a huge gamer, so right when I got into WB, like I was like I walked in as like guys, I know what this is, and then they were just like blank faced and like just I was like okay, never mind, I'm just gonna do my work. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think they 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 did they have started to I guess uh, uh, they started to change up like the names of the guns and, and you know and a lot of the stuff so okay a bit more secret but um sorry your question was what was like the audition process yeah, like what did it what did they tell you at the beginning oh, okay so so for at least i can't speak for everyone else but for my character they did have a breakdown of what archetype they kind of wanted the idea of like what they kind of wanted for this character um and I underst- I kind of understood what they were going for. And then I was like, man, I, I wanted to add a little more, you know, n- a bit more of what I thought could help with the character, a bit more depth <laughs> in my m- personal opinion. So um, they had an archetype of what they kind of wanted. And then I went and saw for like, I guess, his the character's motivation and reasons. Like I went to go see a bunch of like, korean revenge films <laughs> and i was like i took pieces from those movies and i knew i worked with an actor uh for like a two years uh and he was he's a very uh i guess uh n- well-known korean actor uh, actor in korea and mm-hmm. he sort of had that sort of mystery aspect about him and i worked with him for about a year so i kind of knew his essence and so i added little bits and pieces to that as well so um, but in terms of the audition, they do give you like a breakdown of like w- what they kind of want from you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But do you think it's important um, to kind of stand out in the way that you should interpret that and not try to go as uh, as exactly what they want? Like, do you do you think that you should you know kind of go with how you interpret it and stand out that way, or what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's a very good question uh, for, I think, uh, whoever's listening Mm -hmm. uh, as an actor. uh, I think that a lot of actors, they try to get it right. They Mm -hmm. they look at this breakdown and they look at this thing and, you know, they try to get it right. And rather than, and I think that's the wrong approach, rather than trying to get it right or trying to nail it, I think, like you said, um, I think that there are, there's enough information, whether it's uh, a play a television show, a film, or even a voice acting role of like trying to get, instead of trying to figure out what they want, it's, uh, I think it's obviously there's like genre pace, uh, characters, you know, you gotta, you gotta play within the confines, but I think it's rather than trying to be bold, um, you should definitely have fun with it and, and be like, Hey, this is my take on this, this character rather you, does that make sense yeah no 100 like, percent. just really take taking a chance and being like this is my interpretation mm-hmm. um, and it might be completely wrong but at least it's you made a choice because i feel like a lot of the trap is to play it safe and yeah it's a dangerous place to be i i've i've talked to you know 
uh, quite a few voice actors and I've had this conversation a lot because I'm super interested in everyone's thoughts on how, you know, they should approach that. And there's, a, I've talked to a lot of successful people who, who just say like, maybe the director doesn't know what he's looking for until you show him or yeah, him or her. It depends on the director. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes directors know exactly what they want, right? And and then in that case, you know, uh, I as an actor try to just, you know, uh, I'm helping that director yeah. you know, see, see that person's vision, and I just I, I trust them, and I'm like, okay, let's let's mm -hmm. go for a ride. Um, but there are there are other directors or, or or writers that sort of are are have an idea, but yeah. they are open to interpretation, and so you just kind of let it fly. And, and magic happens, you know, so it just kind of depends. But yeah. yeah, definitely situational, but I just thought that was interesting um, when it came to auditions and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I just saw a, a round table just recently where <laughs> it was like Peter Dinklage and Andrew Garfield and Nick Cage. I think it was like this year's, but yeah, they had an interesting conversation about and a few other actors. I can't remember, um, but, you know, they all sort of in agreement were like, you just got to. You know, like sometimes, you know, instead of and they had it, it made me feel better as well when they were talked about like, the, like you just play, you just let it happen instead of like trying to, you know, play out the moments that you have played out in your head. It's like you just respond to the other actor or, you know, the material or, or whatever it is. So mm -hmm. kind of cool. I also do watch all those roundtables to, to listen to all the actors talk. I don't, I'm not even a, like, a. I don't even aspire to be an actor at all, but I just, I love the, the craft and I love, like, all those guys are so talented and I, lo I just love hearing their, them talk. And, uh. I agree. It's, it's really, it's really cool to, I agree, like, to, li to listen to any actor or to talk, to, to talk about their process or, you know, what they've gone through and things like that and, um, yeah, it's always, it's always interesting because it's not, not, not everyone's is the same. Right. And, mm -hmm. and so it's always cool to see everyone's approach. Yeah. Um, do you, is there anything about playing with or against your character crypto that you find annoying? Do you ever get annoyed by getting EMP'd or a drone? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, you know, not a lot of people play as crypto so it's like occasion they i feel like they i've seen the character a bit more on the field these days but mm -hmm. um yeah like i cuz i main my character and uh, it just so happened that way because like i you know i just played it with played as him a lot but i didn't realize how annoying he could be and i was like hope so like you know cuz i i would do all these annoying things you know i'd send my drone out and like scan 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 i would open closed doors you know i'd emp just to piss him off and i'm like i'm all like laughing by myself but then like when i'm not crypto and i'm i'm and i'm hiding and this drone comes in and it's making these noises and it's opening these doors that it, 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 it emp's me and it's like and i'm trying to shoot it and i can't get it and it's like it's, I'm, I'm getting so pissed off and like i'm so focused on the drone that they come in and they, they annihilate my team i'm like oh my god i can't believe that just happened and it's like it's it's really annoying when that happens. yeah the drone I noise didn't... does get a little bit annoying sometimes when it's yeah, just sitting yeah. there yeah and it's it's i mean that's what it does right uh but 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 it's a lot of fun to do against people but when they do it against you it's not fun <laughs> <laughs> that is true that is true is it did it was it weird to hear your voice in the game at the start? It was, you know, um, I got a bit more used to it because I had done a game called World War Z. Um, oh, really? Yeah, a little bit before. Huh. Um, it, I don't know if you play the game, but it's like Left 4 Dead. Yeah, my, my brothers played it. So, like, I know of the game. I just, I have not played it yet. Cool. So, so like you know, one of the one they kind of go all around the world, and one of the missions uh, is a is like a, it takes place in Japan, and I play one of the characters. Um, and because that had come out first, I I think did that come out first? I think it did. And and so I got I got sort of used to listening to my voice. Um, but yeah, in the beginning, it was very very strange. But 
you know, you kind of get used to it. Yeah, I assume. I, I just, no one, not a lot of voice actors play the game that they are a part of. So I, I was just curious. Does, do any of the other legends play? I think, uh, well, well, I know. No, I shouldn't say. I think Ben, Ben Prendergast. So he voices Fuse. He definitely plays um, and he's very good at it. <laughs> like, so he and I play together. Um, Chris Edgerly played occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, but other than Chris, I think it's just Ben and I who play because um, it's it takes up a lot of time, you know, um, and, you know, a lot of these guys have families and they got things to do. So, you know, um, I, I do not. So I have a bit more time on my hands. <laughs> and also, I just love gaming. You know, I, I, I genuinely love to play video games and to be a part of video games. So that's why I, I, I play it. But um, I think you're right. I think a lot of ac voice actors generally do don't but i played video games my whole life i mm -hmm. you know i built pcs i've i've you know have i've had almost every single console ever made um and it's just you know it, and it just so happens that me when it, whenever i wasn't acting i'd play video games so it just so happened that it was like a nice little marriage that happened and that now games are becoming not become, well they are super popular so mm -hmm. yeah it's just so yeah happened that way and it and it always hasn't been that way either and that's kind of it's it was a it was a tough road in you know middle school and video yeah. games i mean i'm sure it was I, I don't know maybe it was it was pretty like there was a stigma around it and i think that's kind of dropped off because i feel like everyone plays now i agree with you man um you know like you bet touching back to like middle school or, or growing up, you know, it was, mm -hmm. it was like you, I was, you know, you'd be called the nerd or like a dork or like, you know, what are you wasting? Why are you wasting your life playing games? And I, I kind of understood now that I'm an adult, like what they were trying to say, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, who, no one, no one would have guessed that gaming would have blown up this big with like, you know, all these esports organizations and these, you know, competitions and like streaming and YouTube, like, like all you young guys have so many opportunities. But mm -hmm. like me back in the day when I would get, have my EGM magazine coming or game pro coming monthly. And I look at killer instinct on the N Nintendo 64, get hyped about like a new system or PlayStation. Yeah. Like I was, you know, it wasn't seen very uh, cool. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't very cool. <laughs> But yeah. luckily, I, I had my core group of friends who were big gamers, so we would have, like, LAN parties. So mm -hmm. in high school, uh, on Friday, uh, and big ups to my mom, <laughs> you know, uh, all of our moms, like, would be okay with it. So on Friday, we'd go to one, all, all, my one buddy's house, and we'd all bring our PCs with our CRT monitors like that weighed, like, 200 pounds. And then we'd go in the living room and, like, hook it all up. And we, we'd literally sleep over his house Friday to Sunday. It would play, like counter-strike or quake 2 um or unreal uh and, and we did that every weekend um, like and, uh, unreal yeah. tournament unreal tournament yep. oh yep. i love that game yeah and and you know and 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 the crazy thing is is like i ended up in gaming and all three of my uh, best friends ended up in gaming as well and they they're incredibly successful and um you know and it it, it just it's kind of cool to see that you know because it's like all of our lives we're told like this isn't cool and like you said it's extremely mainstream but the crazy thing is is that like at, like around i guess like to you i guess you're around your age uh you know i, I feel like it's, it's really cool to see that it's more mainstream and it's really cool to be a gamer mm -hmm. um but people my age still like when i tell them what, like I, i'm still hesitant to tell people what i do because people my age still have that stigma and like, mm -hmm. like they and they they because they're not a part of that world um and they're like oh what do you do and then i'm just like oh it's, uh, it's hard to explain <laughs> yeah. What, yeah what twitch is and they're like what you're in cartoons and what are you doing gaming and so it's like i'm like never mind it's 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 fine <laughs> <laughs> i i did want to show you this i've been i've had this for a, a long time but I, I just didn't, I've never seen any other ones. I don't know if I've ever tried to, I have this Pathfinder hey. one. So they, oh, okay. So they have, they have other ones. Jeez. It looks like there's only eight of them. 
eight characters. Like, but I I thought this was really cool. I'm a I'm a big fan of Chris and and what he does. So nice. Yeah, yeah. Chris is amazing. He's he's been in everything. Not only is he Pathfinder, but he's been in he's been on The Simpsons. He's still on The Simpsons. Yeah. Um. You know, he's done Star Wars. Like he's he's definitely someone to aspire to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do. Uh, are you are you good with doing some some voice lines? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I um. If you have any that you want to do, like if ones that are re uh, requested a lot, or um, you can go ahead and do that. But I do have some. Um, I mean, I think I have all of them. But if you wanna, do you have any? Or if not, I can give you some. Please, please give me some, because okay. honestly, I don't, I don't ever remember any of them. <laughs> I really don't. Um, I do. I'm trying to find some that like. This is always my debate: is I don't want to get out of this podcast and be like, oh, I should have asked him to say that. No, that's, please. That's the worst. Um, Go ahead. Okay. Uh. You thought you were better than me. Now you know the truth. Okay. <clears throat> you thought you were better than me. Now you know the truth. That's amazing. That was amazing. <laughs> what was was that like the initial voice for it? Or is, did you did you work on like did you develop that or is that just like some like I don't want to say like basic voice, but like, you know. Yeah. Um. You know. Uh, no, no. Not at all. Uh. So it's kind of interesting how this happened. So they, I think they were looking for someone from South Korea. Like they were looking for specifically, because uh, he needed to have a Korean accent, and I just so happened to uh, speak Korean fluently, and so, um, you, and it again, like it's that weird thing where like living my life a certain way. Like I, I, I bounced back between here and, and Los Angeles and Seoul like for about a decade. Um, and so I knew how to phonetically break down the English. And so um, the way the voice kind of came about was, so like when it's like, uh, if you say like, now you know the truth, like that's how you'd say it in, in, a, in, an, in an American accent. Mm -hmm. But it, but then if you break it down, if I write it down in Korean, it would sound like now, you know, the truth, truth, and it's like, it's broken down like that, but you can't, if I say, if I say it like that, uh, then you don't know what I'm saying. So then you have to kind of American it up. Now, you know, the truth. Now, you know, the truth. So it's like, you kind of add a slight Korean accent, but then because he's crypto and he doesn't want to be found you bring it down and very tight and you know because he's suspicious like now you know the truth <clears throat> excuse me it's and it so it's like it's kind of like that's kind of how it came about i love it i love it i do also do really really love the uh like the outlands yeah like the yeah. series wow it's amazing the yeah the team they're they're incredible like they they like they every time i think I'm like they can't top this. It just gets better and better and better, and you know that's all. That's the the hats off to the whole, you know the team over at Respawn. I, I would watch a TV show with that. Hey man, so would I. <laughs> so would it, I, man. I it's would love incredible. That. The the Bangalore one that just came out was oh, amazing. So good. It was so it was good. so amazing. There's, I love the Bloodhound one. Um, so good. All of them are just so. Awesome. Respawn killed it with the Outlands. I agree. Like every single, like every season, I'm like, I'm so excited because I don't, they don't tell me uh, what's happening. So mm -hmm. I only know what I, what I record and they just keep everything from me. So um, I'm just as excited. And then, and so like when, and, and everyone on the team, everyone at Respawn knows I'm a huge Titanfall fan. I am a, they know that. And, and so, some of the writers purposefully don't tell me what's happening and they keep it from me. And so when, when the pilot came out and the Titan and like that, that explosion, you see that Titan in the back, I was like, Oh my God, this is amazing. 
and I'm, you know, I, I and, and I would love for a show as well. I'd yeah. Make it, just, just as a fan, I'd, I'd, I'd freak out. Yeah, it's amazing. Um. Okay. Uh. Do, uh um. I'm not a pawn. I'm here to break the game. Okay. I'm not a pawn. I'm here to break the game. I, I never know how to react to it because I'm just such a, like a child when it comes to it, just to hear it. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm it, trying to contain my excitement. Yeah, man. My my roommate is also a massive um, Apex fan. He, Sweet. for the longest time, he was a, uh, he was the third in the world for Bangalore kills for like a really wow. long time. So he's, he was grinding the game. Um, <laughs> And right before this, I went down, he's laying in bed and I went down there and I, I was like, I'm talking to the crypto voice actor. And he's like, no way. <laughs> so, it was pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I got to talk to, or I got to tell a lot of people, or I didn't tell a lot. I told like three people, but, um, I told people that I was doing this and it was one of the, one of the coolest reactions I got from people so I don't, oh, that's awesome. I don't usually try to like super impress people with like people i get on my podcast like before i do it but this one i couldn't resist because i was just <laughs> like we're getting into apex we're getting crypto so That's awesome yeah i i would do if i don't know how to to get this to you or like i but i do want to have you say something in like a korean line okay um, um. but i I don't know how to say it to you. Um, yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, I could like send it, I could like copy and paste it into your sure. DM on Twitter. Sure. Okay. Okay. Let me see this. <clears throat> if that oh, is correct. That is correct. Uh, he's, it, it, he says, <laughs> That means like let's end this. Ooh, kind of badass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. Do you do you play any other legends frequently? Yeah, I I I sw pretty much swap between most of the legends. Um. You know, I play as Lifeline, Bloodhound, Bangalore, Revenant sometimes, Mirage, you know, Caustic. I play as pretty much all of them. Um, I, I wish they had, a, like, a random select because <laughs> yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, but, yeah, I, it's like a fighting game where it's just, like, I like to know all the characters. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah. I play yeah, as knowing as all the characters also helps you um, when it comes to, like, going up against that character. Um, yeah. Yeah, which that that's uh, I think that's super important. If anyone out yeah. there is listening to this and wants to get better at games like that, just play other characters. Yeah, and you learn how they work and stuff. I know a lot of people like main one character, mm -hmm. like and they they freak out if they can't pick the other characters. It's like you know you should you know have have a have at least like three. Yeah, you know, if you know. think that's bad in Apex, Valorant is also like that. Where yeah. if they don't get a specific character, they will literally like throw the game. Like they will, they won't try. And it's like right. the weirdest energy like to be around <laughs> is someone who's like pouting over a video game. And yeah. It's so yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, I I'm a big I'm a big wraith guy. I love wraith. Nice. I also love the voice actor, um, yeah. which she was in my my favorite TV show of all time. I'm a big, a Flash fan. Oh wow! Yeah, and uh, so I'm I'm a big Flash fan, and she was in there as Patty Spivet, and so I I was very very shocked to see that she was uh, also in the Apex Legends cast as Wraith. So yeah, Chantel is great. She's gorgeous and she's amazing and she's the like, nicest person in the world like she's she's like she's funny and 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 she's so nice that's it's incredible yeah
I love to hear it. I love to hear it. Uh, also, I just want to, I just want to give a little bit of a, a, uh, praise to, I love when like respawn did such a good job with the cast. Everyone is so, so talented and all of you guys killed your characters in different ways and to the top, it was top and bottom the, the, you know, from the outlands to the end game to your guys' performance was all amazing. And I don't know if you guys hear that enough, but you guys did an amazing job. All of you. Oh, thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, but I think that goes more toward, uh, respawn as go, well too. Yeah. The praise should go, I think more to the writers, mm -hmm. uh, and because the writers do a tremendous job as well as our sound director, Eric Kraber, who the Kraber is named. Oh, after. what? Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to say that's awfully close. <laughs> he's uh he's he is one of the best people i've ever worked with um as a director it, it, you know in any in, in any form of like like acting or, or whatever he knows exactly what he wants um and he's like the kindest guy and he's like you know he he's amazing um so a lot goes to him uh, as well and you know in the casting like they they i think they're very intentional with their casting mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot the hats off to uh, all the writers and the direct, you know, everyone at Respawn. So, yeah. And I, I loved, I've, I've watched so many interviews with, I'm not exactly sure, and I should know this, but uh, it, was, it was two people who were like working on Apex and who had a big, um, big in in character development and um like designing characters and stuff like that but I, I watched some interviews with them as the game was coming out and i i just loved how involved and you could tell that it meant so much to them and that they're really doing right by apex and bringing stuff over from other games that they worked on like um stuff with octane his backstory um all the writers and stuff like that with um apex they really really cared about what they were making and i just loved how they went about everything and it was so amazing how everything kind of tied together in some way or another with falc and octane and it was really it was a really big payoff for a lot of people um to to see all these characters in that way come back to a game and even just the whole backstory on the Apex games is so awesome. It's not just the game that you're playing. Like, you're investing in these characters. And then even further than that, you get to the voice actors. And, you know, you're investing in that family of you guys. And seeing all that, it's amazing. And just everything that came together is is just hats off to you guys and everyone at Respawn and all the everyone. Thank you. That, that, that means a lot. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm trying to find some other ones. I, I don't, uh, I'm trying to, I want some, uh, what's it called? Like ultimate voice lines. But do you, what's, what's cryptos like when you pop his alt? Do you know what it uh, is? Like his voice line? I don't think. Oh, he does. Does he? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. I'm trying to find it. I, I should be the one who. Oh, here. Maybe I can get. Ability. You can, there's a. Uh, the. Oh, yeah. Putting my eye in the sky is for a drone. Oh, it's, yeah. Yeah. Did, did you want to hear that? Yeah, one? sorry. Okay. No, it's right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> putting my eye in the sky. Are you, do you have any heirlooms? Oh yeah, um, I oh, I have. Well, respawn is very grateful. I mean, respawn's very grateful. I'm very grateful that respawn uh, 
has given me a bunch of stuff. And so I, I own every single one of them except for three. Um, okay. I don't have Mirages, Wraiths, or Pathfinders. Uh, but it's because uh, I have like 100, I have 150 heirlooms, heirlooms, 150 shards just saved. I've been saving for like three seasons. <laughs> uh, just in case, like, you know, my characters get, my character gets his, so. That's what I, I would assume is, if you're allowed to say this, uh, you can just say no or whatever. Um, are they planning on doing one for every character? I would assume so, right? I would assume so, because that's what it looks like, but, you know, um, I have no idea. In terms of, like, the game development and all that kind of stuff, like, I don't know anything. <laughs> I don't... I don't know in terms of like design or characters or story. Like I just, they don't, you know, I just literally just show up and say the lines and that's it. Yeah. We're, they, we're, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, they, they also like, when I meet with them, I'm like, I want to know. And I'm like, I asked yeah. them and they're like, ah, and they don't, they won't tell me. So, <laughs> uh, what, what was the first, what, what heirloom did you get first? Do you um, remember? trying to think oh i got i think i got bloodhounds bloodhounds is so it, cool yeah that's that's probably my favorite yeah the, the hatchet um even though bloodhounds like there's not a lot of like interactivity with it you know she bloodhound just kind of like spins it and then checks it out yeah but i just love the hatchet it's it's just amazing mm -hmm. yeah it's it's really cool i also I can't believe you don't have the the boxing gloves. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't like them at all. Like they don't. It, maybe it's because there's like two of them, and it kind of takes up the screen a little bit. I think a lot of people don't like it, but I, I use them. I I love them. I would I would use. I mean, I equip all the heirlooms um, yeah. for all my characters, but yeah, I just I just have one. Uh, what do you call that? I only have 150 left, so yeah. that's why I'm saving it. <laughs> and all, all the other ones, I think, were given to me because, like, they every time an event comes out. Because before, I think you had to like buy these packs, but then now, from what I was seeing, it's like you unlock if you if you purchase like when the heirloom first comes out, like you purchase all the skins and all that stuff, then you finally get the heirloom. Yeah. So that's that's how I ended up getting all the other stuff. Okay. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, I I've spent a lot of money to <laughs> One thing that I will say Respawn does do very well is they know how to make me spend money. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's incredible cuz it's like I forget because, you know, being a part of Respawn and them, you know, just kind of because I, everyone that works on the game, they they get everything that I I get as well, mm -hmm. and so it's like we just kind of wait. And I'm like, oh, cool, you know, we get it. And then like when I go and play Valorant, and like I wanna, I'm like, that's a cool skin. I click it, and it's like, nineteen ninety nine. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I forget. Well, I mean, Valorant is not far off of. I I probably have more money spent. Actually, it's very, probably very close on both Valorant and um apex so <laughs> my it it doesn't and I, and I don't i don't make a ton of money to justify all of that so uh yeah they 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 you know the companies they know how to bring you you know the, the shiny little things yeah like, oh man i, I kind of want that mm -hmm. i've definitely uh i've definitely paid my my dues for it being a free game so and probably paid for a, lo a lot of other people. Um, so I'm definitely not playing for free. <laughs> do you do you open packs at all, or do you just get things? I'm I'm curious to like do you do you get like credits, or do you actually get like skins, like just in your Sometimes, account? Sometimes it just depends. Sometimes they'll like just drop like an insane amount of credit credits in my account excuse me or sometimes stuff will just be unlocked it just okay depends. that's really cool i'm very jealous but it's really cool 
<laughs> yeah, you know, he, he, like the thing is, is most of the cast, they don't play the game. So like, you know, they get it too, but they just don't play the game. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm like, guys, like when I, when I, you know, I was like respawn, I was like, hey, 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 hey. I was like, hey, it'd be nice, <laughs> you know, because I actually play the game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I did. Um, I, I watched an interview with all of you guys together in like a Zoom call and you and Nick were. Oh, boy. Yeah, I I loved it. I, I loved your guys's your I don't want to say performance, but. You guys were you guys were awesome in that interview. I just want to tell you that that I I watched that whole thing and I was I was laughing pretty hard. Uh, Thanks. I'll tell you what happened. Okay, I'll tell you what happened. So Nick came over my house and we were just chatting and we ended up drinking a bottle of wine, uh, and so we were drunk and so that happened and then we were, we were we were feeling pretty good and and we, and then we were having such a good time together that we we were late for the for the Zoom. <laughs> For the zoom call and everyone's like what's going on <laughs> so <laughs> we're just having a good time <laughs> i loved it though i loved it uh i did i did hear do you do you play ranked at all um yeah i mean like i don't mind playing ranked it's not i i know like if someone if someone's like let's let's grind ranked then i, I then i'll be like sure no problem and it's cool because rank you know when you play ranked, they, everyone plays a bit more strategic <laughs> instead of just dropping hot. So I do like that aspect, but I'm not a type of person that has to rank up and get silver and gold and, you know, and all that stuff. Uh, Cause I know some people are like, dude, I need that. And uh, it just, it's to me, I just want to play the game, but yeah, mm -hmm. whether it's ranked or not, like I, I don't mind. What do you know what the highest you got in ranked was? Um, I, I don't remember. I think, uh, a couple YouTubers and streamers were trying to help me get to like plat. Um, it, it didn't happen cause we didn't have time, but I think we got to like gold. Okay. Uh, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm plat right now. And oh my God, it's, that's, it's so difficult to just, cause none of my friends play very much. Like I play way more than all of my friends. So like yeah. most of the time I'm just sitting here like playing by myself and and then playing by yourself with with no one like communicating to you is very difficult when you start to get like in in higher tier lobbies and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's it's not always the the greatest time. Uh Yeah, the game is definitely more enjoyable. I mean, I think all games, uh but yeah, specifically Apex it, when like you have a solid team and you have a good group of friends that you could rely oh, yeah. on. And I, I realized that too. Cause it's like when I would, when I, you know, before I got crypto, it was like, it was hard to find anyone to play with. And it was like, Oh, that's kind of a bummer. And now it's like, you know, it's a lot easier to find people to play with. And it's just so much more fun when people are trying to play together as a team and they're communicating. And it's like, you know, for example, like, since you're a Wraith main, it's like you do your Wraith thing and then I don't care as much about kills or damage. Like I just want to win. So mm -hmm. with S Crypto, I'll just like, I'll scan. I'm okay with doing that and like EMPing and like setting up traps and stuff like that. So it's like when you have people that are on the same page, it's so much fun. Yeah, I'm also like that. Um, I, I do like playing Wraith a lot, but I do play Bloodhound a ton as well. Um, but I'm also, I just want to win. Like, I don't, I don't care about my, I, I have friends who are like, oh, you only got this much of damage. Or like, yeah, you only yeah. got I'm like, I don't care. Like, I, I yeah. really don't. I'm not that type of guy. So it's like, just, we're, we're, ha we're, we're, we're here to have fun. Yeah. Right. But, yeah. but other people are out there. It's like, you know, they, they need to be like, they need to have the most damage and like, yeah. they need to have the most kills. Like I got 20 bombs. Like, Cool man, right on man. <laughs> I I did get a twenty bomb um at the beginning of the game. It was my first game on PC ever, and I got a twenty bomb. Um, so now my wraith, I have the cool twenty k badge. Nice. Uh, so that's my little flex on on Apex. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to. 
some of these are just like really short you know i i'm curious to see or to hear um did you do like a lot of variations of of like certain certain words or like just how what am i trying to say like like pinging stuff or is there like a is there a lot of different variations or is it just pretty like just like a couple um a couple voice lines in there because what i'm what i mean by that and i'm sorry to this long question um but like in in other games especially valorant like there's so many different variations of like the same voice line so did you try out different you know like i'm recalling my drone is there like different inflictions on some of them absolutely so i think our i think apex has probably the most um from what i talked to the writers like out of i think any other game um and they tr because they try to cover every single situation mm -hmm. and in terms of uh different inflections or or lines definitely a hundred percent like i anytime there's a new voice actor that joins our game i'm like ooh, i know what they have to go through and it's you i don't think what a lot of people understand how much like how many pages there are mm -hmm. to like the pinging system it's insane and and then because the writers wanted to tell more story now each character has has different voice lines interacting with different people so like crypto has a different line with mirage than to watson than to caustic and mm -hmm. caustic has a different you know and it's just it's insane and i don't know how they keep track of it but they do have like a database <laughs> but it's a lot it's it's a lot it does so, seem it seems like a lot to come up with it's like it's it's a lot to come up with but it's more it's i think it's harder for the gut for people at respawn to keep track of yeah because they can't mess it up but every time there's a new season they so we go and record that so like i've recorded up to you know whatever right season what what, what is this season 12 is it right now yeah season whatever whatever season yeah. it is right now so we we we've recorded up to here but then every season there's more stuff added so whoever the next voice actor is has to go back and record all of that mm -hmm. so it's like it's it's an insane session yeah so basically you you recorded to like like say this much but then you're just adding on like this and then right. but they have to add on like this right. yeah so like if i recorded like for six months for example just throwing out random numbers six months then um i just had i had six months of recording to just do in one go and then month seven i just do a little bit of that and then month eight i just do a little bit of that and then month you know but then the new actor has to do all of that <laughs> and it's like oh my god <laughs> yeah i do you guys do you know when everyone else knows about a new legend uh we typically don't um when they're announced we're like you know again they kind of don't really tell us so mm -hmm. they're announced and then we're like okay who, who, who and then we have to find figure out who the new voice actor is or the writers will tell us or something like that okay um i i think we we are pretty much done awesome. um what's up Oh, I said awesome. Oh, um, but I I just want to take a moment to say thank you. Like, it means the world to me that you gave the opportunity to me out of all people. This has been a dream of mine for many, many years. And um, you gave the opportunity to, uh, to me to speak with you and pick your brain a little bit. And it was amazing. You are such a... Uh, just amazing guy and oh thanks i appreciate it you i i love seeing all your stuff i love seeing all the apex the legend stuff and um it was an absolute dream come true to to speak with uh 
an Apex Legend, and I'm glad it was you, and I just want to say thank you. Oh, man, no problem, man. Of course. It's been a pleasure, and thanks for having me. And um, Yeah, man, uh, it's, it's, it's been incredible. The community has been incredible, and um, I'm, great, I'm grateful to be a part of something something this huge it's 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 way bigger than me you know <laughs> um and I'm, I'm grateful as well to to the community to the gaming community to people like you to uh you know to respawn um never in a million years did i ever think as an actor i'd be a part of something so it's it's i mean i i feel like you know i always say this but i feel like you know it's apex it, it almost feels like the mcu of the gaming world and mm -hmm. um and it's huge you know and and Never in a million years did I ever think that I'd be a part of this. So thank you as well for being a part of the com community and, you know, sp supporting the game as well as, you know, interviewing me. So thank you. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for, for those kind words. And they, the whole Apex community is is amazing. And we love, we love you and uh, everything that you guys do and as well as Respawn. And I, I just, I, I can't thank you enough again and again. Um, but I'm, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, thank you, Johnny, for um, being a part of this and being a part of the podcast. I know a lot of people are going to appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.